So let's get the perspective of a North Korea analyst on the upcoming summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and US President Donald Trump. I'm joined on the line from London by Maria uh, Ko Duty, who is a North Korea analyst for NK News, one of the world's leading websites dedicated to news and analysis about the North. Good morning, Maria. So this summit is just a, a few hours away now. What does your gut tell you about how this is going to play out? Is it just going to be a good photo opportunity for Kim and Trump, or do you expect some real substantial progress? Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me. Um, I think it's going to be a surprise. Um, I feel that this time is different. A lot will depend on the very first impressions each leader will get on the other during the um, bilateral when they'll be accompanied just by translators. And empathy will going to play a, a great role. And those elements will determine the mood of the summit. Um, I think both leaders want the summit as well. Both have invested political capital and they know they're making history today. Um, it is difficult to achieve substantial progress just with the summit, especially considering that we are talking about issues like denuclearization, peace regime on the, Korea, on the Korean Peninsula, security guarantees, and that we are talking about two actors that don't have diplomatic relations and two leaders that have never talked with each other. So having the summit is already a first big step, and I hope this chance will not be wasted and that the parties will seize this opportunity to draw a path that will be long and difficult towards the management of complex issues. Well, Maria, we kind of get the feeling now that this is just the really f f first very important step in what could be thousands of other steps and we're already hearing talk that uh, Trump might potentially go to Pyongyang if he's invited there and there's also talk that Trump might invite Kim Jong-un to the White House or even Mar-a-Lago which would be interesting but a lot of people are trying to discern North Korea's true real uh, intentions why they want this summit at this time in your opinion what motivated Kim Jong-un to come to the negotiating table at this moment in time yeah, um, North Korea has sourced direct talks with the with U.S. for years, and that's because the U.S., um, in the regime's view, uh, the uh, hostile U.S. policy towards Pyongyang is the main threat to the survival of the Kim regime. So the fact that Kim Jong-un wants to speak with Trump is neither something new nor unexpected. Uh, I think that what motivates Kim Jong-un now is, first, he feels he is in a position of strength and he's confident that we can sit down with Trump and talk with him as a peer. And Kim Jong-un has declared the nuclear power status of North Korea, has brought back on track his relationship with China, has started a process of improvement of relations with South Korea. So um, it's, it's, uh, these are all good, very good steps. And second, now that the first pillar of Kim Jong-un's political line, the Byungjin line, has been realized, that is the nuclear development, it's time to focus on the other pillar, on the economic development of the country. And that's also functional for maintaining its legitimacy inside the country. Um, that's why the lifting of sanctions is very important for Kim Jong-un. And he wants to lead the country out of the economic isolation now. And President Trump seems to be injecting a bit more realism into his remarks about what his expectations are. No overnight immediate change, but a roadmap to change. Do you think Trump's shift is the right approach here? Or is this really rather more of a, a public posture when in private we know that Sung Kim has been busy working away, when in private, behind closed doors, they've already thrashed out a lot more of the details than they've been letting on? Um, I think that for sure there's a lot of information we cannot access and working level meeting have been going on for the last weeks in Pamunjong, in Singapore, in Washington. And this is also the normal procedure in case of such important big summits. Uh, bureaucracies work behind the scenes in order to get everything ready and let the meeting go smoothly. But I think that in this particular case, things are also going to be decided during the meeting itself, depending on the two leaders. 
um, I welcomed Trump's recognition that it's going to be a process when he was referring to the nuclear deal with Kim Jong-un. Uh, this is for sure the right approach because first, North Korea will not give up its nuclear weapons just because the U.S. The U.S. asks for it, and second, because all because of the huge trust deficit that exists between these two actors, and this is the first critical issue to be solved in order to to go on on other issues. And um, it needs a comprehensive strategy in at addressing North Korea's security threats that are related to the military, to economic and legitimization aspects and at building confidence and interdependence between these two actors. And that requires years to be accomplished. Well, unfortunately, we are running out of time, Maria. But just one more question before we let you go. One of the biggest uh, topics at play here, at least for President Trump, is North Korea's denuclearization. The, the main issue seems to be how you define denuclearization. Just walk us through quickly, if you wouldn't mind, uh, how the U.S. defines North Korea's denuclearization and how Pyongyang sees it. Yes, um, the U.S. defines denuclearization as a complete, verifiable and irreversible dismantlement of the North Korean nuclear and missile program. And according to this, this model, only after Pyongyang takes permanent steps to end its nuclear program will it receive sanctions relief. On the other side, Kim Jong-un defined denuclearization during his first meeting with Xi Jinping last March as an issue that can be resolved if the U.S. and South Korea take take progressive and synchronous measures in response to efforts made by South Korea. I think that the U.S. perspective is quite unrealistic. That is not going to happen for a number of reasons related to specific characteristics of the Kim regime, the North Korea system, and the value attached to the nuclear program in North Korea. Kim Jong-un's idea of denuclearization uh, recalls the idea of a process in which each party has to commit and act simultaneously to the others. And that seemed more realistic to me in order to achieve real and lasting progress on the, on the nuclearization. Okay, Maria Ko Duty, North Korea analyst for NK News, thank you ever so much for uh, coming on today. We uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.